Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Women in Engineering session at the March Virtual Open House. We're so thrilled that you've decided to join and listen into our session today. If you've got any questions at any point throughout this presentation, you're welcome to submit questions using the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. And if there are any questions that we can't get to today, you're always welcome to email our team at enginfo at uwaterloo.ca. Thanks for joining and we hope you're very excited to learn more about women in engineering at Waterloo. So before we begin our presentation and panel discussion for today, I wanted to take this moment to do a University of Waterloo territorial acknowledgement. The University of Waterloo acknowledges that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldimand Tract, the land promised to the Six Nations that includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. And our active work towards reconciliation takes place across our campuses, either through research, through teaching and learning, community building, and it's all cent centralized within U Waterloo's Office of Indigenous Relations, which is an incredible um, group on campus dedicated to supporting our Indigenous students and future students as well. At any point in this presentation or for future knowledge, you're encouraged to visit nativeland.ca to learn more about the land that you occupy. Thank you so much for sharing that moment with me. So I am joined today by two brilliant current students, uh, Harumi and Prithika. Uh, Harumi is a chemical engineering student and Prithika is a management engineering student. And they'll be joining myself very shortly to share their women in engineering experiences. But because I haven't had the chance to do so yet, um, just quickly here, I'm Patricia. I'm the marketing and undergraduate recruitment specialist at Waterloo Engineering. And I get to have the lovely opportunity to support our future students into one of our 15 engineering programs. So just before we do hear about our student experiences as a woman in engineering, I do just wanna quickly highlight um, some a great, great organization that exists within our faculty that consists of very passionate individuals, if it's faculty members, staff members, but most importantly, students that work to support and empower either future women engineers or current women engineers. And of course, um, both on the undergraduate and graduate level and even beyond graduation. So women in engineering is a humongous priority at Waterloo Engineering. We recognize that Engineering is such a broad um, field and we need to continue to work towards a more inclusive industry and field of study in our educational lens and in industrial lens and all types of um, different environments. It is so important to have the appropriate representation and women bring so much to the table um, in, in multiple lands. So I can't wait to hear from Harumi and Prithika in just a couple of moments, but we do want to take this moment to share that there is an incredible organization, the Women in Engineering Committee on campus that does some great work. So what did they do? Well, they exist to support current students, future students, graduates, anybody who identifies as woman, um, woman identifying and is within STEM or engineering at Waterloo or the greater community as well. The Women in Engineering Committee um, offers mentorship programs and workshops to build confidence in both technical skills, soft skills, there's lots of professional development opportunities, networking conferences, various social events. That's definitely something that our female students look forward to. And we've also got a dedicated residence, um, St. Paul's University College, where we have a living learning community that is for um, students who are women identifying in engineering. So there's lots of opportunities to get involved, to get supported, to make friendships, meet mentors, et cetera. Um, all that you can get access to prior to starting in your first year and especially throughout your undergrad. So as I mentioned, we need to continue doing incredible work um, in engineering to ensure that we do have um, a better representation for women. Um, something really that we're proud to share and something that we want to continue working towards is um, ensuring again that happy balance. And at this moment, um, in the past previous years, we are above the 30% mark um, for our enrollment. Our first year, um, first year class is at the 30%, which is 
definitely better than what it's been in previous years, but we are looking forward to making the space more inclusive and welcoming to our future uh, female engineers. So we definitely um, want to inspire our women identifying students to consider engineering as an option for post-secondary education. And here are a couple of reasons for why you are going to be amazing in this field. And here are a couple of reasons as well for why engineering um, can be a great um, field to look into. So in terms of the degree that you're offered, the opportunities to work, um, and of course, the ability to, ability to solve some important problems that are happening within the local level, national level, and as well in the international level. So we're super excited that you are considering Waterloo Engineering. Um, we are excited to create a positive and welcoming experience for you in your first year and beyond. But before we continue chatting more about that, let's have um, Harumi join us on the virtual stage here to share her experiences about being involved um, on campus, her experience as a woman in engineering, and She's going to also be sharing some wonderful advice with you. So Harumi, if you can join me here on the virtual stage, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Patricia. Um, well, hello, everybody. My name is Harumi. I am a third year chemical engineering student at the University of Waterloo. Um, and what that means essentially is that I've completed all my co-op terms. So I have a lot of experience both um, in industry and in classes. Um, and there's a lot that I would love to share with you today. So my name is as a woman in engineering. Um, so far, it's been really, really good. I really enjoy my time here at Waterloo. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride in that it's a mixture of awesome, amazing times, but also challenging times um, equally, I would say. Um, it's great, though, because even during the challenging times, there's support from the mentors in women in engineering. Um, professors are also really approachable and are often very welcoming in um, helping you in any way you might need. Um, lecturers as well. And of course, upper year students are also there to help you. And even within your own classmates, everybody is very supporting as we're all going through the same things. Um, so it's been very, it's been a very welcoming experience so far. And I'm very happy to be part of it. Um, apart from that, Balancing schoolwork and co-op is quite challenging, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it can be it can be very rewarding. And one of the ways to really get the hang of it is to um, seek help through the Center for Career Action or Industry Night events that Women in Engineering hosts, as well as other networking events throughout the year that um, the university and WIE um, help host. Some of the resources that I've used and can really speak for um, is the Women in Engineering Mentorship Program. Um, I was partnered with a alumni from Waterloo Engineering, actually, and uh, I was very interested in the material science side of engineering. Um, and I was paired with a mechanical engineer who really had experience in that area and they really helped me kind of have a better understanding of the industry as well as what classes I should um, focus on and how I can really use my skills to really put them to use if I decided to uh, pursue a career in this field. Another resource that I really like from Women in Engineering are the conferences, specifically the What's Next, What Now conference, as this gives you the opportunity to network with female identifying engineering students from other universities in Ontario. Um, so it's really good to expand your network, but also to see how there are other girls like you who are going through the same things as you and really working towards their goals just like you. And it can be very, um, very comforting in that sense. And of course, industry nights, which um, help you connect with current industry professionals um, who are very eager to um, help you achieve any uh, goals that you may have that uh, are in the careers that they are in. Of course, there are other events like uh, Pay My Numbers and Movie Nights, which is very casual, very fun, and you can really get the chance to meet other women engineering students in Waterloo. 
uh, in different programs, which is something that you can't usually do on a day-to-day -day basis if you're not part of a club or something like that. What I personally love about Waterloo Engineering was the cohort system. Um, the cohort system essentially makes it so that you are with the same 60 or so group of people that you started um, in first year and you continue with them until your very last year. Um, it is a great way to form and maintain a solid friend group throughout undergrad as you'll be with them through labs and lectures and sometimes even co-op terms. Um, another thing that I really like are how labs and classes are very, very relevant to industrial applications and my favorite thing is seeing things that I learned in class being applied um, at work. And lastly, of course, uh, co-op and the plethora of options it gives you in terms of careers you might be interested in pursuing. Um, so some advice for future women in engineering. Um, you can do it. it. It is a very scary um, place to be when you don't know if you're able to do it or not. But there are many resources available once you do get here to help you succeed and stay in this career path that you've decided to pursue. And another um, piece of advice that I would like to give is uh, to keep an open mind. The reason why you decided to pursue engineering might not be the reason that makes you stay here. Um, there's a lot to learn and a lot to explore. So if you continue being curious and you continue working towards your goals, um, you will be really surprised at the things you can accomplish. Um, for example, myself, I went into chemical engineering because I wanted to work in the cosmetics industry, but through my classes and my co-op placements, I found a passion in the automotive industry, um, specifically the application of polymers and plastics in the automotive industry. Um, which is something I never would have thought of when I was first getting into engineering. So yeah, just keeping an open mind and continue having that sense of curiosity and um, continue working towards your own self-development really is the, the best piece of advice I think I can give to anybody who is thinking about pursuing engineering as a career. Amazing. Thank you so much, Harumi. I'm, I'm amazed by all the resources and services through Women in Engineering that you have utilized throughout your undergrad. So it's pretty cool to know about so many of the events that exist, the conferences, the industry nights, um, and even the mentorship program that you got to participate in. So thank you so much um, for sharing your experiences, Harumi. Um, up next, we're going to invite Prithika to the virtual stage to have her share her own experiences on campus, but especially as a woman in engineering. Prithika, please join me here. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patricia. Um, but hey, everybody, I'm Prithika. I'm a third year management engineering student at the University of Waterloo, um, and I'm also the VP external for the Women Engineering Student Committee. So I'm super excited to be here to share about my experiences a little bit, just being a women in engineering, but also like give you the inside scoop about uh, what goes on in our committee. Perfect. Um, so just talking about my experiences as a woman in engineering, there's so much I have to say. So I've, I've tried my best to condense it into one slide. But um, just first off, it's really amazing um, how many people I'm surrounded by who are so talented in everything that they do. And I think it's just so inspiring to see other women and other females in engineering sort of doing what I would like to do. Um, and just being, to, uh, being able to reach out to them, ask them questions, and then follow in their path has been something that I'm super grateful for and something that's been awesome that I've been able to achieve at Waterloo. Um, and also just having the ability to network and meet other people through the co-op system um, where you're getting placed with a company every four months and then coming back to school. And I think even just through co-op, I was able to uh, do uh, try out a bunch of fields and a bunch of things that might be interesting to me, which led me to meet even more interesting people that I would, would have never crossed paths with before. Um, it was definitely challenging for sure. I think coming into university, I was a little afraid because I was an international student. So I was worried that it might take a little longer for me to make friends or that I wouldn't really be able to integrate into the culture as well as I would have liked to. But all of my worries were washed away in like a week um 
because I think the community was just so welcoming. I was surrounded by so many people who were excited to be there as well and who wanted to be able to like be friends with me and also just like learn and grow with me. And I think just being in a community like that, it's just infectious. And um, I'm so grateful that I was able to sort of choose Waterloo. And uh, I can confidently say that I sort of consider Waterloo to be my home as well, which is um, which is not something I would have considered before. Um, and finally, it's super exciting. I think it's also just a great way to meet other like-minded individuals, um, be it through class, through clubs, extracurriculars. But I think something that um, has helped me quite a bit is just a network of alumni at Waterloo. So I have um, all of these different mentors that I was able to sort of get along the way just by reaching out to them, asking questions and having them being invested in my growth and uh, sort of professional development has helped um, shape my experience even more. Perfect. Um, so I can talk a little bit about the women engineering resources. I'll start specifically with women engineering, just to give you some uh, little information about what we do. So there's a bunch, we have like a bunch of sub teams. So we have the outreach committees, we have events, we have uh, the socials and design team, as well as a podcast team, which I, which has become a recent development. And we actually just uploaded our last video yesterday for at the International Women's Day. So that's super exciting. But I think, um, some of the resources I personally used just as a member was a going to these different outreach events, which would either be with the company so you can um, network with industry professionals, learn about co-op opportunities, or just ask um, certain questions that you find interesting about the industry. And um, I've also been on the flips on the other side of things where I've been the volunteer for these outreach events. And it's such a great way to give back to community, I think. And um, it's opened my eyes up a little bit because I was able to do it for like grade four to grade six kids recently. And uh, we were teaching them about why we, or not just teaching them, but letting them know why we chose engineering and um, why it was something that we really enjoyed and something that could be a potential path for them. Um, so yeah, it really was cool to be on both sides of uh, just on the receiving end, but also being a volunteer. And I think even the podcast, it's a, such a great resource that we have recently started putting out for the Waterloo engineering community, where uh, we're just learning about experiences of women in engineering, both faculty members as well as students. So you can get that inside scoop and uh, see what it's really like like and um, make that decision for yourself whether you'd be interested or not. Um, and I think other things that I've uh, been a part of as well over uh, my time here in Waterloo is um, the engineering ambassadors. So I was involved since first year, I think. And um, it was, again, a great way to, for me to meet other engineering students on campus, to be in different programs, or um, just like in the math faculty as well. So it's interesting because we're called the engineering ambassadors, but we're able to meet people in different faculties as well that I wouldn't have done otherwise. And through that, I've made like up of your friends who are so excited to sort of walk me through like the resume critiques and things that could be helpful for the co-op program, which, again, I wouldn't have uh, been able to access otherwise. Um, and there's a bunch of things we do, like end chats and open houses, as well as shadow days. And these are all just ways for us to help incoming first years, as well as um, high school students. So that's a really great resource as well, um, even if you aren't at Waterloo already. Um, apart from that, I think two mentorship programs that I sort of uh, leveraged during my time I'm here was during inter uh, Industry 4.0 and Tech Plus. So Tech Plus, I was the mentee. So I was getting mentored by an upper year in computer engineering. And uh, this was a time when I was very confused about what um, path to take, like which program I found in in interesting or just which industry. And I remember they were be they were uh, they were so helpful because they were able to um, sort of redirect me to different. Uh, mentors or different upper years in all of those different areas I found interesting. So someone in data science, for example, and someone in PM. And that way I was able to get my questions answered and learn more about like the interview process and what they like to see whether that's something I like. Um, and for Industry 4.0, I was more so on the mentor side of things. So I was mentoring another first year just to help them through the whole navigation process. But yeah, um, there are several resources on campus that you can um, you can leverage in order to make your experience even better, but I've just touched uh, on a few right here. Awesome. Um, and what I love about Waterloo Engineering, there is so much I love, but I think uh, similar to Harumi, I love the cohort system. So we're a management engineering class, I think is a little smaller as opposed to other engineering programs. So I think we have 90 to 100 people in our class and we attend all of our classes together from first year, except for electives maybe. Um, and I think just uh, having that sense of community and having other people sort of going through the same thing that you are going through um, and being able to talk to them about it has ha really helped me. Um, even just uh, since first year, I was able to find this like solid group of friends 
friends that I could rely on just uh, for mental health or also just to like do schoolwork together. And we've been able to sort of carry that on um, because now I'm in third year and uh, I absolutely love it. I, I would say that most of my closest friends from the university are from my program. So that's super exciting. Um, and then for the co-op program. So um, I've included like a little transition here from software engineering to SWE to data science to then PM. And uh, I think I hinted on this a little earlier, but one of the reasons I really chose uh, my program or management engineering is because I wasn't quite sure what I was interested in. I was interested in a variety of things, but I wanted to be able to come in into an engineering degree where I had the flexibility to try a bunch of different things and also be uh, equipped for success in each of those different things I try. Um, and that's one of the reasons I chose my program. And uh, it's really helped me so far because uh, I've had three co-ops so far um, and they've been in software engineering. So that's what I thought uh, that was sort of one thing I really wanted to try out. And then most recently, my most recent co-op, I did it in data science because um, I was interested by the field of data. So that was something I was able to do again, just because of the my program and sort of the connections I had with alumni. And then now for my next co-op, which is this upcoming summer, I am and I'm gonna do program management. So just, I've been switching around a bunch, but just being able to do that and having the flexibility to do that has been super exciting um, and something I'm super grateful for as well. But um, yeah, that's some of the few things I love about what fellow engineering. Um, and yeah, so the final slide, the most important slide for sure, is the advice for future women in engineering. I think um, even as like a high school student or in middle school, I remember always being intrigued uh, about coding or robotics, for example, but I was a little intimidated because I noticed that in my robotics class, for example, out of 20 kids, 18 of them um, were male identifying. Um, but something I did want to put out there is that do not be afraid to sort of keep yourself open to these experiences, though it might be a little intimidating at first something that helped me is just uh, trying to reach out to other people or um, who were similar to me, who still made it in that space. So I remember reaching out to people who'd graduated from high school, who'd done the robotics club before and asked them why they did it. And just hearing about their experiences got me more and more excited about doing the same thing for myself, which is why I wanted to say, keep yourself open to new experiences. Don't let um, the intimidation of, of feeling like you're not being represented in that space deter you. you just be the first one to do that. Um, and you'll sort of be paving the path for everyone else behind you. Um, but yeah, join that programming club on school uh, on your on campus, just do a coding boot camp or try side projects. That's something I used to do a lot. And it doesn't just have to be in the coding space, right? You could be building like a design project from scratch. And that's also engineering and something you're super excited about. Um, but yeah, engineering is diverse. So I'm sure there's a space for you that you could find interesting. Um, and then the second part was just, yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. I remember initially, I was just like, I would be wasting this person's time. Um, I don't know if I have anything to offer. But honestly, like, don't even worry about it. As a women in engineering right now, and a, a third year with like, hopefully a little bit of experience that I can share, I can tell you that I love talking about my experiences. So I'm pretty sure there are several other people out there who are excited to share that with you as well so leverage that that's such a great resource that you can use to your advantage and to also understand whether this is a space that's actually interesting to you um, and finally i just want to say you belong irrespective of what path you choose be it engineering or otherwise you deserve to be there and um, you are qualified regardless of what you um what your background is or what your qualifications is i just wanted to say if you put your mind to it you should be able to achieve it um so just don't let that sort of be like a factor into your decision about whether or not you want to do engineering but yeah you got this um but yeah that's all i had patricia that's incredible advice Prithika, and your passion is definitely very um noticeable there so thank you so much for sharing these experiences your love for your program which is so awesome all the additional resources that you had it as well. So um, amazing. I couldn't be happier with um, the information you both were able to share today. So just to conclude our PowerPoint presentation portion of the um, session today um, is to encourage you to connect with women in engineering. So I know we've shared a little bit about what the group does, um, but if you're interested in learning more and seeing women in engineering in, on, in action on campus, you know, from an academic setting, co-op setting, student life setting, um, we encourage you to connect and follow the Waterloo We team um, through Instagram, Facebook, and I know you can also connect with them on various multiple channels. Um, you could search them on uh, through a Google search and learn more about the amazing work that the student committee does, as well as the staff and faculty committee. 
And then last but not least, if there's any more questions um, from today, you're welcome to connect with the recruitment admissions team through enginfo at uwaterloo.ca. Or if you specifically have a question about women in engineering at Waterloo, you can reach out to wie at uwaterloo.ca. And finally, as Prithika shared, we've also got something called NCHATS if you want to be matched with a, a female student ambassador to learn more about their experiences. Thanks so much for joining our presentation portion of the session. Um, we're going to dedicate the remaining couple of minutes to some panel discussion questions. So Harumi and Prithika, you can join me back to the virtual stage. That would be lovely. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Prithika and Harumi, once again, for sharing your experiences. So before we wrap up, I just want to ask each of you um, two questions to learn more about your experiences. So Harumi, I know you mentioned quite a little bit about resources and the mentorship program. So I want to hear a little bit more about that experience. Um, in terms of like your overall growth, um, would you recommend other um, students to consider mentorship programs when they come to university themselves? Yeah, um, so overall growth and general experience. Um, I think it was great. Um, it gave me the chance to connect with someone in industry who I would not have had the chance to do unless I had gotten a co-op in that field, which sometimes isn't um, viable just because there's no, not enough openings in that certain area or anything. Um, but so in terms of that, it was great. I would recommend it if you're curious about a specific field or just general what is next after you graduate. Um, in terms of growth, I um, it gave me a different perspective on what to look forward to in my classes and how to really um, implement what I've applied prior to current classes and current co-ops. So it's um, I, it helped me grow in that sense, um, just had a, a wider view of my program through mentorship. So I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's just curious about what it would be like or who isn't sure about what it is that they want to do. Amazing. So we're getting a big thumbs up from Harumi. To, she recommends mentorship programs. Prithika, I know you're on the same page. I'm a huge advocate for mentorship programs and have utilized some of those resources yourself. Fabulous. So Prithika, my question for you is, um, when did you make the decision to pursue engineering um, in post-secondary education? And what key factors led you to make that decision? So I'm getting you to think back to your high school days, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, that's a that's a fantastic question. Um, uh, thinking back to high school, I think I really started considering engineering as sort of like a program I'd be interested in probably around grade 11 or 12. Um, I know in grade 10, I took like a coding class, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, but then in grade 11 is when I started sort of reaching out to other uh, female engineers that I knew of in my sort of community or people who were uh, in engineering at the moment. And I wanted to ask them what got them excited. Um, and just talking to them, I learned that um, engineering is a really collaborative space where you're like working and the main goal really is to come up with solutions to problems, real innovative solutions that you're coming up with by collaborating with a lot of people. So that was an aspect of engineering that was so interesting to me and something I also enjoyed just um, as a kid was building things be it software or hardware. I remember when I was in middle school, I used to have this like kit where I would be building like chairs, like tiny chairs, a car and stuff like that. And that I really enjoyed. And then as I grew older, I also enjoyed a building like software products, be it like side projects I did or like a personal website for just like promoting myself. So this was something, uh, I think just all of those little things that I uh, sort of picked up along the way really helped me decide that engineering is probably something I want to do. But just for my program, in general, I wanted a more general engineering program where I had the flexibility to choose between a bunch of things that could be exciting. Love that. And I love that, like your own experiences just in middle, in middle school, in high school really did make that impact. So it's so different for every student I've connected with. It could be a mentor, it could be a person, it could be an event, it could be a class project, a course. So um, fabulous. That's great, great, great. And we are very thankful that you did choose Waterloo Engineering and of course the Management Engineering Program. 
So Harun, back to you for your next question. Um, is there anything you wish you knew before entering the field of engineering as a woman? Mm -hmm. I guess I would have liked it if somebody had told me that it isn't as scary as others make it out to be. Um, because there's like this big fear of, oh, you're going to be the only woman in like a class of 100. And it's like, you're not going to be able to make friends. Nobody's going to help you. Um, and it just wasn't true. Even um, even during co-ops and during my classes, um, it's there is a community for female identifying engineering students, both at Waterloo and whatever it is that you decide to do your practices in. Um, and nobody's out to get you. I don't believe they are at least. Um, <laughs> and in the end, I think one of the things that most sticks out is how young you are instead of your gender. Um, everybody's willing to help you because you are young and you're eager to learn. So it would have been really nice um, if somebody had been like, hey, it's not about who you are. It's more about what you want to do. Um, that's really what sticks out the most in the end. Um, that's honestly an incredible reflection, Harumi. And um, I think bring really important points about we gotta we have to start changing the narrative around women in engineering as well and focusing less on you know being different or being you know a smaller amount of humans within a room setting and instead continue talking about the strengths the ideas the diversity of thoughts that women do bring in and if it's based on your passions or interests this is a field for you and Prithika you ended our advice there sharing that you belong here and I love of that message as well, um, that our women in engineering students do belong here. So really, really wonderful advice there, Harumi. My final question before we say our goodbyes um, is back to you, Prithika. Um, if you could just, how would you describe the women in engineering community at U Waterloo? So not just within the uh, committee standpoint, but just across the faculty, across our programs and such. No, absolutely. Um, I would say that, so coming in, I remember being um, so excited because there were all of these women engineering events that I could um, attend and I remember meeting so many different people so diverse and they were all excited about um, and just increased representation of women in the tech space right and just every like every industry in general and it was what I really enjoyed seeing was that there were other like male identifying students there as well to sh show their support for women engineering and the fact that they wanted to increase our representation and give us a voice um, so that was something that stood out as well and I think um, in terms of like the women engineering committee something I've noticed is like during co-op terms as well just having like a female manager or female mentor is not something that happens often but when it does it's so exciting to see someone who's been able to do that for me and uh, in, ahead of me basically and be able to sort of share that advice with me to see um, and hopefully so that I'm not making the same mistakes as they are but just able to grow as an individual regardless of my gender or what I identify as um, but I would definitely say just super welcoming and there's such a, a sense of community here about just if I like for example right now if I met another women in engineering be it any program we would immediately hit it off just because we had so much to talk about um with Waterloo and the resources that they offer so um yeah to sort of encompass what I said it's a great community super welcoming and I think something I've noticed as well is that ir irrespective of your gender there's everybody and there's literally everybody on campus is excited for you to be here and supports you in your growth um Amazing. And I, I'm just thinking to myself over here that for incoming students for fall 2022, they're going to and and beyond as well. They've got two familiar faces that they can look forward to now um, seeing on campus in September. So thank you seriously both um, so much for your time, your expertise, your experiences, your advice to future women in engineering students. And Prithika, as you just shared, um, this session is not just for um, women identifying students. We always encourage um, if it's males or other allies to be part of the conversation as well and to take part and um, continue fighting for increased representation for women in engineering. So on this note, thank you to everybody for listening today. And we cannot wait to continue these conversations and have you join our Waterloo engineering community or our Waterloo um, women, uh, women in engineering community as well. So thank you so much. We'll do our goodbyes and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, thank you.